So I've played a lot of Roblox Area 51 games, way too many if I'm being honest, and of course I've made plenty of videos going over said games, such as Survive in Area 51, Sanctic 2, and others I hope to talk about in the future. And even if most of them have awful flaws that can't be fixed for the life of me, or you know, they're an R15, it's always been a tradition of mine to at least play through each of them, compare them to Sanctic, and give my thoughts on the game as a whole. But ever since I started making these videos where it's just me talking about a specific Area 51 game, a lot of people have been asking that I talk about the very one you clicked on this video for. And its name, you might ask... Survive and Kill the Killers in Area 51. No, not the one made by the second coming of Christ, Homo Mafia 1. I'm talking about a different version of Survive and Kill the Killers in Area 51, made by the developer Mr. Not So Hero. If that name rings any bells, then it should, because I've talked about Mr. Not So Hero before on the channel. He's also the creator of the Scary Elevator, yet another game I've ripped open to pieces and dissected on the channel. I mean, the scary elevator is fine, it really is the most mediocre, basic Roblox horror game out there, but when I heard that this guy had a separate Area 51 game for me to check out, I just knew I had to play it and see what I thought. Just like the other times I've reviewed Area 51 games in the past, we have to do the good old tradition of shortening down the game's title. Since it's exactly the same word for word to the official Sanctic game, very creative, I'm going to call this game Heroes Area 51. After the creator, of course, and also because I don't want to confuse you all. Anyway, with that being said, let's start with the game's page right away, not wasting any time. What positive things can I find to talk about here? And wow, this guy really likes to use emojis, huh? Mate, just write your descriptions like a normal person and put spaces between your exclamation marks. It's very effective for triggering people. Also, this game has like two thumbnails, by the way. Here they are. And I'm sorry, what's going on with the title? I can get over everything else, but why is Area 51 in all caps compared to the rest of the sentence, which is in lowercase? I know this is more of a subjective complaint, but it sounds like you're screaming to me. Survive and kill the killers in Area 51! Doesn't sound right, does it? Oh yeah, almost forgot to mention that this game was created in 2010, way before Sanctic's release in 2014. But I made a ruin Christmas for you and let you know that this game is not that old. Sure, the place for this game was indeed first published in that year, probably as a cheap obby or something, but the actual Area 51 aspect wasn't added until 2019. I've had some comments from people saying that Homer didn't make the original Area 51 game and that he just stole it from Heroes Area 51, and while it is true Homer's game is not the first in the trend, this game definitely did not come before Sacktuck. Just wanted to clear up any confusion. I like how the guy put in the description new sound effects, as if he was running out of ideas for the update logs. Yeah guys, you know, whenever I go into Sactic nowadays, I always look forward to listening to the sweet sound effects that the enemies make. What do you mean you play the game on mute? You might be thinking that I'm nitpicking here, and well, I am. But I wrote this script after I finished my first playthrough of the game, and really couldn't help myself to spoil the mood further. Is it too late to say this entire video is satirical? Anyway, on to the actual game. The first thing you'll notice as soon as you get into Heroes Area 51 is that you don't actually spawn on the surface. No, this time you start in the base itself, in an expanded entrance area. A lobby if you must. I mean, it's a nice idea, but I'm really not sure why. I haven't really seen any other Area 51 game do this, and for good reason. The surface is supposed to be a sort of safe area that you can explore without fear of dying. And yeah, I know you're safe here too, but the giant lasers stopping the killers in their tracks just isn't the same. I don't know, take your pick. To the right of the lobby, there's also a special forces hangar, which, you guessed it, contains some free weapons that you can obtain if you have the special forces game pass. Kind of functioning like a VIP system, of course. I mean, this kind of stuff is fine. Please don't buy this though, and we'll get onto why in a minute. You're really just throwing your money down the toilet. The final area in the lobby is the shop, which is similar to other Area 51 games. I'm pretty sure this is becoming a reoccurring theme by now, but of course you can buy weapons with kills and m uh, monies. Yeah, monies. This game's currency. Is monies even a real word? Oh my god, it is. Wow. Not sure why the developers picked the word monies. I think we could all agree that the term cash or points would have been fine. I mean, we have survived in the Area 51 calling their currency cells. Even that's miles better than what, what this game picked. You get monies, of course, from killing enemies and surviving events. Yes, this game has events, and we'll get onto those in just a second. But by far the easiest way to obtain stats in this game is just by standing still. I'm not joking. You can generate cash and kills in this game by literally doing nothing. And it's not like a small amount either. In about two hours of playing this game, I was already up to 600 kills, despite not actually having killed that many killers at all. Like, I get it. I understand you want to keep people in your game, but I don't know man, you know, give me all the money you want, but generating kills out of thin air, it just isn't right for me. Anyway, enough criticism, 
let's get started by talking about the map first. Of course, the base has been expanded. I mean, name one Area 51 game with more than 100 players active at any given time that doesn't have an original map. Oh wait, this game is less than 100 players active at any given time. Huh. Anyway, the map is... well, it really just is okay. Not bad, just okay. There really isn't anything to write home about when it comes to the base, other than the fact that there's ketchup splattered pretty much everywhere for some reason, like, why? A big problem I have with the map, though, is that you can't even interact with half of the doors in this game. No, this isn't a bug or anything, you actually physically can't open and close a lot of them, in any way, ever. Which kind of sucks if you're trying to, you know, trap a killer in a room to stop them from killing you. Who thought this was a good idea? I assume this change was made to make it so the enemies can always reach you without getting trapped, but I'm not sure. Just feels like a lazy thing to include in my opinion. Speaking of the doors, they also have another massive flaw to them. And no, it's not because they have an ugly yellow border around them that looks like pee. You see, there is no GUI to open and close them without physically clicking on the buttons yourself. I mean, this isn't as bad as a problem as, you know, half the the doors being quote unquote broken, but it's still a massive nuisance if you're trying to get around the area quickly. Trust me, you'll understand once you play it. Although I strongly discourage playing this game at all. You might be thinking that I'm holding my expectations a little too high for this game, and I am. I'll be totally honest with you. But come on man, interactable GUI doors. They're super easy to implement with free models. I, I just want to hear the excuse this time, that's all. Anyway, we haven't really had an in-depth talk about the map in this game yet, but like I was saying earlier, it really just is okay. And it's not like there aren't lots of new rooms to explore, like, there are new rooms, but that's all they are. New rooms. They don't bring anything we haven't seen yet to the table. So what new locations are there, I hear you ask? I mean, I am making this video to save you from playing this abomination of a game after all. Well, there is a sewer. It's a singular room, but it's a sewer. There's also the back rooms. Yeah, the back rooms in Area 51, I know. And there's also a xenomorph area. Although it's just a map completely ripped and stolen from the scary elevator. Not joking. But that's really about it. Uh, I'm sorry. I think the main gimmick of this game is expanding on what's already in Area 51. For example, the radioactive area is almost completely different and the mineshaft is, well, well, the mineshaft is basically the same except for a blocked off entrance to the void. But that's not adding more rooms. Only expanding already existing locations is pretty lazy and barely takes any time. Even for me. Oh my god, guys, look, it's not the bathroom from Sagduk. So this game not only has next to zero new locations, but steals Sagduk's rooms too. Nice. I'll let Homer's legal team deal with this one. I don't know, maybe I was expecting something a little bit more, but locations aside, I know that there is something that can bring this game back from the depths of hell, and that is the killers. Or the enemies. Or the, or the monsters. Hey, I don't know what they're called in this game, who knows? So yeah, the killers. What do I say about the killers then? Hmm. Well, I could start with the fact that they're all the same. I'm not joking around here. All of the killers in this game function the exact same way. And when I say exact, I mean exact right down to the hit animations and behavior. All the monsters do in this game is run towards you and slap you with either their fist or a weapon. That is it. I have just described every killer that you will ever find in Heroes Area 51. Like, I understand scripting different behaviors is hard, but come on, man, you could have at least given, I don't know, Cartoon Cat an ability where he, like, wait, Cartoon Cat is in this game, what? And it's not like the killers even do, like, lethal damage anyway. Like, you really have to be standing still for these guys to even have a chance to kill you. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing either. I mean, other Area 51 games have weak killers that you'll probably never die to either. Like, even Sactic, really. I can't remember the last time Michael Myers took my life. But even with all of that being said, I still think there needs to be a line that has to be drawn between some of the killers being weak and all of the killers being weak. You get it. Also, killers don't have pathfinding in this game. Like, why? I'm sorry, but pathfinding should be a standard and a priority for Area 51 games nowadays. I mean, only if you're gonna put through effort to make all the enemies unique, which we've established that this game doesn't really do that, does it? But even if all of the enemies have just copied and pasted clones of each other, we'll run through a few of them here. Let's see, we've got a purple alien with a very strange walk, like what is he doing, just pacing in my direction? What? We also have Knuckles.exe, who over the course of my playthrough has done physical damage to my eardrums, like good god this guy is loud! Why does he get stuck in the floor a lot? Another coolish killer worth mentioning in this game is the Smiler. He spawns in the weird back rooms the area that I mentioned earlier. Now, just look at this guy real quick. Really looks like he could tear me in half if he got his hands on me, right? Well, let's just give him a hug and see what happens. Yep, even the monster that's twice my size isn't a threat in Heroes Area 51. A shame, honestly. I really would have liked to see something able to kill me. Wow, 
I'm just noticing that all of the killers in this game are either ripped from creepypastas or movies. Guess this guy couldn't come up with anything original at all. Well then, I wonder if Slenderman made it into the game then. Oh. Oh. So yeah, Slender is like, who thought this was a good idea? Like, how did they mess this up? He's Slender Man. Slender Man. He's supposed to be slender. You know, thin. Then why is he the same size as every other killer in the game? At least give him tentacles or something. Anything. I really don't understand this decision at all. Even just throwing the regular Slenderman model from Sactic would have been a better option. Like, like which one looks better, honestly? Oh, and Talking Ben is here for some reason? I don't know what to think anymore. Oh yeah, another nitpick. Have you noticed that all of the enemies in this game are in R6 while you're in R15? Yeah, have fun in seeing that now, I'm really sorry. There's also a couple of other killers in this game, like Tails.exe. No, not Tails Doll, his name is Tails.exe. Completely different killer. Jason Voorhees, who looks very odd in this game. And Sonic.exe, with a knife. Yeah, I don't think they thought through any of the killers in this game. There is something I wanted to talk about a bit later, but my goodness, I have to discuss it now because it presents itself as a problem pretty much as soon as you join the game. And that is the sound design. The sound design in this game is awful. Like, it's unbearable type awful. A lot of the sounds in Heroes Area 51 are pretty much just lazily ripped from Sanctic or other games. A good example of this is the Tails doll laugh. Let's give it a quick listen, shall we? <laughs> And now let's compare it to Sactic's Tails doll laugh sound. <laughs> yeah, you can't make this up. It's basically the same thing but pitched down. Sorry guys, but you're not gonna hide the fact that it's just stolen. There are a few other sounds that are taken from Sactic, like the Slenderman tentacle grab sound, and the crossbow shoot sound, and a couple others, but I think you get the idea here. But instead of stealing all of the sounds to make up this game, you know what the developers said when making Heroes Area 51? They said, you know what, let's make it so some of the sounds have the special ability to make you go deaf when you hear them. And no, this isn't just because I had my audio on maximum the entire game. In fact, I was playing at half volume when recording this video. But my god, this game just blasts you with the most ear-crushing audio of all time. To start, there's a random buzz sound that plays when the lights flicker. Doesn't sound too bad, right? Well, imagine that sound playing every six seconds at max volume, because that's what I had to sit through. Yeah, doesn't sound like a pleasant experience, does it? Because it's not. But by far the worst sounds in this game are reserved for the killers. I briefly mentioned Knuckles' ear-destroying screech earlier. I played that clip at 30% volume. Imagine that at 100%. Don't worry, you won't have to. Again, I'm trying to prevent you from playing this game and having long-term ear damage, it seems. There's also the Smiler Scream sound, which plays at the special event he's featured in when he hits a player. <laughs> at least now I know why they added the new sound effects line in the description. And I'm sorry, how does this game have 23,000 likes? Let's talk about the weapons next, or at least how this game handles weapons. Spoiler alert, it's not good. Now, weapons work a bit differently in this game. Some can be found around the map, some can be obtained in the shop, and some can spawn in both the map and the shop. Okay, interesting decision. Obviously, I'm not going to go through all of them here, because there are quite a few of them, and I will admit some are quite creative. The issue I have with them, yes, I have another issue, is the melee weapons. We'll get back to the guns and stuff in a second, but the melee weapons are... Well, they're just odd. Now, I'm not against melee weapons in Area 51 games, and I'm not against them being in Heroes Area 51 either. Like, they do work. They just work in all the wrong ways. Like you'd expect, you really only want to use melee weapons when you're close to killers. But you see, that's also the problem. They only work when you're close to killers. In my opinion, melee weapons should work similarly to guns, being able to attack from far distances. Kind of like how Survive in Area 51 handled it with the Reaper Scythe. Yeah, it's a melee weapon, but instead of attacking from a close range, its main use was for long-range combat by shooting a projectile forward. Of course, said melee weapons would still need to have a cooldown as they don't have ammo, but still, this works miles better to how they were handled in Heroes Area 51. Melee weapons in this game are just plain stupid. You and the killer both get damaged trying to hurt each other, which is just... I don't know, it just isn't right. When I'm attempting to kill a killer, I want to avoid them, kill them, and move on with my life not run into them and take damage. I think this is another reason why this game has a lack of killer abilities. Imagine trying to kill killers like Alien from Sanctic with a knife or sword. Yeah, 
wouldn't work at all, would it? I mean, it's not like the enemies are a threat in this game anyway, because some of the swords in this game grant you not only a HP boost, but a speed boost as well. Yeah, somehow this game is even easier with melee weapons, my god. The guns or ranged weapons, on the other hand, well, are just like the killers. They all function the exact same. Man. All this talk of clones has really got me annoyed. I mean, it's not that hard to add something original to your Roblox game for a change. I mean, I half expect a clone of myself to appear at that door right now and confront me about my life choices. For your information, I've been standing here for two minutes. Oh. So you, uh, really don't like this game that you're reviewing, huh? Well, yeah, I guess you could say it has a few minor issues, uh, yeah. I'd love to join you on the hate train, but why don't you talk about some positive things about this game for a change? I mean, surely there's something out there that this game does right? Dude, this game made Slenderman short. Oh god, kill it. So where were we? Oh right, the guns. Yeah, like I was saying, they're basically all the same apart from the fact that they shoot at different speeds and some of them have lasers instead of bullets. Yeah, yeah, fictional weapons, we get it. I can look past the fact that they're super simple and lack any ammo GUIs whatsoever, but something that baffles me is that they somehow messed up the fire rate of certain guns compared to their real life counterparts. Like you have the yellow pistol found in the radioactive area, which shoots absurdly fast for some reason, and then you have the AK-47 which shoots like one bullet every few seconds. I'm not even joking, this is me holding down the mouse button as hard as I can in this clip. Like how do you not know how an AK-47 fires? I'm not going to go on a whole rant and talk about the other guns because yes, they're all broken too. I'm just going to assume this was all done on accident. Just like I wish the game's creation was an accident. I know so far I... We haven't really had anything nice to say about the game yet, but never fear because there is one last positive thing to say about this game. I'm going to stop myself right there because I know that isn't true. What I'm talking about here is events. Similarly to other Area 51 games, randomly throughout exploring Area 51, you'll get teleported to a different inaccessible part of the map for a short period of time where you have to undergo some sort of challenge to side it by the game. Sounds fun, right? Well, it isn't. Although I think by this point in the video, you already know I have basically nothing nice to say about this game at all. The first problem with this system is that it's not optional. Yep, if an event is triggered, you will be forced to complete it, or, you know, die trying. This actually happened when I first entered my game on my first playthrough. I had no weapons, nothing to defend myself, therefore, all I could do is stand around and wait for the event to end. In other Area 51 games, at least the events were optional. You didn't have to complete them. Every single player wasn't slammed into one room and forced to kill killers. If you wanted to do an event, you could just go through a portal whenever you wanted. Oh, and second problem, there is a grand total of four events in this game. Only four events? Well, at least only unique and original, right? Oh. So yeah, four events. Two of them are the same. Let's talk about those first. The reason why they're carbon copies of each other is that they're both known as random encounters. That's what this game calls them. Basically, you have to survive a select killer outside of the main base. But that's the main issue. You have to survive the select killer. Not kill, survive. You see, weapons are disabled in this area. Not sure why, probably so you, you know, can't fight back or something, but that isn't what I'm playing. I'm playing survive and kill the killers in Area 51. Survive and kill the killers. If I wanted to just run away from the monsters, I would have just played the scary elevator. Also, it's not like you can just reset through these events and go back to the main Area 51 base. No, you have to stay here and survive. Just why? I don't understand why we can't just opt out of this. The only redeeming quality of these survival challenges is that the killers actually do damage. I only wish they were this dangerous in the actual game. Unfortunately though, because the killers still don't have a pathfinding system nor a brain, sadly it's pretty easy to just hide behind a wall and survive. Like look at this, 100% skill right here. The third event you'll have a chance to spawn into is the surface breach event. And just like the name implies, you spawn on the surface. Wait, the surface does exist? No, 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 it's part of an event. You only get teleported there when you don't want to. But that's stupid. The goal of this event is pretty much the opposite of the last two. Instead of running away from the killers, the surface breach acts as a type of farm for points and kills. A couple of killers will spawn in the center pretty often, and all you have to do is stand there and kill them. Yep, I don't think this one is thought through deeply either. But hey, it's nice to know that Jeff the Killer spawns in this event, even though he doesn't appear in the actual game. The final event in Heroes Area 51, and probably the most inventive of all, is a full-on boss fight. No, it's not interesting or difficult at all. I mean, you can pretty much just stand next to the killer and hit him with your sword until he dies. But hey, a boss fight. I'll take anything original I can. Also, why does the health appear as decimals? Looks bad. And that was Heroes Area 51. 
Yep, that's about it. Nope, that's really it for this game. You can of course buy passes and one-time items if you want to make this game even easier. Goodness knows why it would do that though, it will already hold your hand through the entire experience. But yeah, that's really all the content you're going to get out of this thing. I'm sorry. Huh. Seems I've not only lost my audience, but my clone too. Seems I've run off somewhere. Honestly, I can't blame them, this game is atrocious. So, should you play Heroes Era 51? Absolutely not. Do not even set foot into this game. It is an atrocious abomination. Don't even search it up to dislike it. Just don't play it. I made this video so you don't have to, and I really don't want to see this game get loads of players because it really, really does not deserve any. It, it, it's bad. It, it's awful. Heroes Era 51. It's, it's, it's not a good game. I'm being serious now. No, no more nitpicking. No more jokes. This game. It, it's not good. It's a rushed mess that's... It, it's essentially just a cash grab to capitalize off of Sactic's already massive... Well, it's not massive success, but mediocre size success. It is li literally just a cash grab. That is all this game is and all it's trying to be. And, you know, maybe there's a slight chance that maybe the developers will see this video and correct some of the things. And if that's the case, that's amazing. I'll come back to this game in like a year and maybe it's changed and I'll, I'll re-review it, alright? I'll give this game a second chance because every game deserves a second chance. But for that one person in the audience right now who still disagrees with every single point that I've said so far, let me just say one final thing. One, one, one final thing about this game and then you can just go home. Talking Ben. Talking Ben.